amen. That was a great singing. Amen. Alam niyo po, pagka hindi kayo sumabay talaga sa awitin, believe, sa awitan natin, believe me, you will not enjoy the service for the uh, for the whole day. Ang napakalaking uh, role po ng ating pong uh, awitan sa ating pong pananambahan, kaya may ganyan po tayo. All right? Open your Bibles please in the book of Ezra. Nasa book of Ezra na po tayo. And uh, uh, napakaganda po ng uh, libro po na ito. And there's a lot of details that we can learn from this book. Bagamat ito ay uh, uh, hindi ganun karamihan ang chapters ng book of Ezra. Kung titingnan po natin, ang Ezra po ay hanggang chapter 10 lamang. It only have 10 chapters pero may mga ka, may kasamahan po kasi ito na mga libro na atin ding sunod-sunod na pag Ezra chapter 7. Ezra chapter 7 verse number 10. I'll read verse number 10 and that will be our key verse for this book. Sabi po ng Bible, are you there? Amen. Yeah. All right. Uh, by the way, before I continue, gusto ko lang po ipaalala sa lahat na po uh, yung ating uh, bagong device na nandun sa pinto ay uh, let's make it sure pagpupasok po kayo dyan ay uh, ma-check tayo. Bagamat alam natin okay tayo, wala namang problema dyan na uh, magpapacheck tayo for our safety uh, protocols as well. All right. Uh, Ezra chapter 7 verse number 10 For Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord and to do it and to teach Israel st- uh, yeah, to, and to teach Israel statutes and judgments. Alright, so that will be our key verse for this book of Ezra. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, O God, for giving us once again this chance and this opportunity and this blessing to learn from the book of Ezra, the details, O God, of Ezra that will help us be more familiar with the books of the Bible, O God. And we're asking you to please continue to give us the right spirit and the right attitude towards our learning and uh, give us, O God, the willingness to learn, O God, from uh, the book of Ezra. Once again, please cleanse us from all unrighteousness. All the glory belongs to you, O God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. All right, as I said, we're already now in the book of, we're already now in the book of Ezra. And uh, isa po sa maganda unang dapat natin makita po dito from the book of Ezra, I'll start with by giving you the details Nang Ezra po ay, ang pangalang Ezra ay meron pong ibig sabihin. Alright? In, uh, ang ibig po sabihin ng pangalang Ezra ay ibig sabihin po niyan is Jehovah Helps. Okay? Jehovah Helps. Okay? Jehovah Helps. Actually, kung titingnan niyo po ang book of Ezra, ang book of Ezra, sa book of Ezra po, Yung pangalan po ni Ezra is not mentioned until chapter 7 verse number 1. All right? Until chapter 7 verse number 1. And as far as the author, authorship of the book and the date is concerned, both Jewish, yung mga Jewish po ah, yung legit, <laughs> both Jewish and Christian uh, tradition so ay uh, nag-ascribe sila that the the book of Ezra is really uh, under the authorship of Ezra. Makikita po natin uh, that the first part of the book of Ezra ay ito po ay sinulat in third person. Okay? It was written in third person pero po uh, after ng kanyang pagdating sa Jerusalem that was around 458 BC Nag-switch po into first person na yung approach ng sulat. Okay? Nag-switch na into first person. At makikita po natin na even the concluding verses nung 2 Chronicles, yung 2 Chronicles po ay similar po yan, may pagkakahintulad po, pagkakahalintulad po yan sa panimulang verses ng Book of Ezra. It is because kung maalala nyo rin po, they all, all they also have the 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 uh, uh, the thought. Uh, yung mga Bible scholars they also have the thought that Ezra authored the book of Chronicles. Kasi may similarity po yung ending part ng Second Chronicles at saka yung first part ng uh, the beginning verses ng book of Ezra. So the date of the writing ng book of Ezra 
is uh, somewhere in the period ng after ng kanyang pagdating sa Jerusalem. Again, that was 400, that, uh, that, that was 458 BC. So as far as the authorship in the date, nandudong po siya sa 458 BC uh, na panahon na isulat and the uh, author is no other than Ezra himself. All right. Now let's proceed to some of the uh, background facts of the book. Maganda po yung may, may makita po tayong mga background facts dito po sa libro po na ito. Ito pong book of Ezra, katulad na sinabi ko sa inyo kanina, it, it, only, it only consists 10 chapters. Sampung chapters lang meron ang book of Ezra. Pero ang book of Ezra ay may mga kasama pa ng libro na iisa lang sila, kumbaga nakalinya sila, na pareha sila magkakadugtong ang kanilang storya. Alright? So, ano yung mga kasama niyang historical books? Yung tatlong historical books po na ito is no other than the book of Ezra, Nehemiah, and the book of Esther. Okay? Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther. Itong three historical books na ito, all are similar. May, pag pag may pagkakaparehas po ito sa pagre-record ng dealing ng Diyos sa mga Hudyo after ng kanilang uh, after their going sa captivity at yung kanilang pagbabalik sa Palestine. Okay? So ga, dealing na Dios ito sa kanila after their, their going sa captivity at hanggang sa kanilang pagbalik sa Palestine. And during this these times, dito po natin makikita yung pag-raise ng Dios sa tatlong prophets among his people. Okay? Three prophets among his people during the post-exilic period. Sino-sino po yung mga prophets na yan? Nadyan po si Haggai, nadyan po si Zechariah, and nadyan po si Malachi. Alright? Malachi, yung pinakakalaban ng mga Kristiyano, si Malachi. Okay? So, yan po yan, tatlo po na yan. So, uh, Haggai, Zechariah, and si Malachi. Yan po yung great... Uh, three prophets na in-raise ng Diyos during the post-exilic uh, uh, period. Alright? And the subject of Ezra, yung subject po ni Ezra is about the return of the remnant. Okay? Ang tinutukoy niya po, ang, tinu ang, ang pinaka-subject po ng book is the return of the remnant. At yung remnant na po yan is according to the uh, history, it is... Uh, it is 50,000 Jewish people ang bumalik sa kanilang lupain. 50,000 Jews that returned to their land. Yan po yung bilang na meron po sila na nakabalik sa kanilang uh, uh, lupa. Alright? Now, as far as the background of the book is concerned, brethren, meron pong two, dalawang stages. Meron pong two stages ng pagbabalik Okay? Nang mga Hudyo, from the captivity po ito, ha? from the captivity, may dalawang stages po yan na pinaghiwalay. Okay? 80 years po yan. 80 years. So, 40, 40. 80 years po yung, uh, yung uh, history po na yan, covered ng history po na yan. Yung, uh, yung uh, pagkakahati-hati po ng mga yan, yung pagkakahati-hati po ng mga yan is na uh, may kita natin sa sa sa, sa, sa dalawang uh, sa dalawang hati po 'yan. Yung unang pagbalik, yung simula, yung commence ng kanilang pag-return, okay? The commence of their return, the, of their return, ang nanguna po sa kanila ay si Zerubbabel. All right? Zerubbabel and that was under the reign of King Cyrus. And uh, King Cyrus 538 BC. So ayan po yan, time po na yan. Ibig ko sabihin, again, naulit ko, ay uh, uh, ang nag-lead po sa kanila dyan ay si Zerubbabel. And then yung completion, so 40-40 po ha, kasi sabi ko nga po sa inyo, 80 years. And then the completion, yung completion po is, uh, ang nag-lead na po ay walang iba kundi si Ezra. Ang nag-lead na po ay walang iba kundi si Ezra and that was under the reign of King Artaxerxes and that is 458 BC. Okay? 458 BC. So, makikita po natin yung uh, 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 
40, yung 80 years po, jump po sa ano po na yan, jump po sa, uh, sa panahon po na yan, yan po, yan po yung napapaloob sa panahon po na yan. So, as far as the outline of the book is concerned, meron po itong, uh, may, may mga ibang approach po ng outline or synopsis of the book. So, first, ibibigay ko po muna sa inyo yung pinaka-general outline ng book na nahati po ito sa pito. So, if you're writing this down, you can uh, write this down. Madali lang naman po ito. Wala namang ganong komplikasyon kayo mga ano dito. Again, ina-avoid ko nga po yung masyadong detailed na, na bahagi ng uh, mga libro. Dahil uh, sa Bible School na pa, na ituturo naman po siguro yan. At uh, I believe na ituturo yan ng kanilang teacher sa Old and New Testament Survey. All right. So, uh, ito po yung outline ng Book of Ezra. Actually, sa mga Bibles, meron po kayo makikita ang outline. Uh, there are some Bibles, by the way, that you can check some outlines regarding the books. But hindi ko lang alam kung lahat kasi medyo pricey yung iba na may ganun talagang uh, details ng book. Pero yung iba kasi, yung magkakaiba sila ng approach. So, they, I, katulad po sa akin, I have different Bibles na may different approach. So, pinipili ko lang po talaga yung pwede po ninyong makita that will really be able to help you familiarize with the books of the Bible. Alright? So, the, the outline, the uh, synopsis of the book of Ezra, the first po is from chapter 1 to chapter 2. Ito po ay pinamagatang the return of the land. So, the first part of the book is the return to the land. Okay, inuulit ko po, it is the return to the land. Okay, so ano po yung mga nakapaloob dyan sa pagbabalik po nila? Tatlo po yan. First is Cyrus' proclamation. Nandiyan dyan po yung pag-proclaim ni Cyrus. The second is the temple treasures return. Okay, the temple treasures return. And the last is ay yung mga taong kabilang doon sa pagbabalik. So, yan po yung nasasakupan ng uh, uh, the return, ng kanilang pagbabalik sa kanilang lupa. So, that is the first part of the book of uh, Ezra. From chapter 1 to chapter 2, yan yung makikita po natin. Now, from chapter 3 to chapter 4, ang makikita naman po nating sunod na details sa libro, po, sa libro ng Ezra is all about the rebuilding of the temple. Okay? It is all about the rebuilding of the temple. Yan. As far as rebuilding of the temple is concerned, may limang divisions po yan. Okay? May limang divisions ang rebuilding of the temple. The first one, yung unang-unang inestablish nila is the altar. Pinaka, uh, pinakapangunahin nila is the altar. Okay? And the next is yung foundation. Inilagay na po nila sa tama, nga, sa tama niyang kalalagyan, yung foundation. And then the next is the the the, uh, the third part is uh, the facing of the enemies. And then the fifth or no the fourth is their compromise. May kita po natin yan, their compromise. And then the last as uh, regarding the uh, the topic the rebuilding of the temple from chapter 3 to chapter 4 is about the political interference. Okay? The political interference. So, yan po yung uh, meron, yan po sa rebuilding of the temple. And then the third uh, part ng book of uh, uh, outline, the third division of the book of outline, is uh, makikita po natin sa chapter 5. Sa chapter 5 po, ang tinutukoy po dyan is the temple work. The resume of the temple work. Kasi na-delay po yan dahil nagkaroon na may hinarap silang kalaban and then ayan, magka, marami pang naging issues so na-delay po yung temple work. Pero ito po sa chapter 5, nagkaroon na po ng resume. And moving on to chapter 6, dyan naman po yung completion ng temple. Okay? Completion of the temple. And then chapter 7 to chapter 8, from chapter 7 to chapter 8, it is all about the visit of Ezra to Jerusalem. Okay? Ito na yung pagbisita po ni Ezra sa Jerusalem. Chapter 9, dito po na expose na yung confession ng kasalanan ng mga tao. The sin of the people confess. Okay? Sins of the people confess. Sa chapter 9 po yan. And 
after the confession, sa last chapter, makikita po natin dyan yung cleansing and revival. Cleansing and revival. So that is the outline of the book of Ezra. Again, yung mga pinaka-topics po niyan, uh, hindi, ko ba, hindi ko na po ulitin yung subtopics, the return of the land, rebuilding of the temple, temple work resumed, and then the, temple, the completion of the temple work, and then Israel's visit uh, to Jerusalem, and the sins of the people was confessed, and then the uh, cleansing and revival. So, yan po yung pinakanilalaman po ng Book of Ezra. Now, katulad po na sinabi ko po sa inyo kanina, may mga iba-ibang approach po ng pag-outline sa Book of, sa mga libro po ng Biblia. Yung binigay ko po sa inyo ngayon, yan po yung pinakabuod. Now, there is also what we call the spiritual reflection. Outline ng spiritual reflection. Kung baga, uh, kanina, yung pinaka-history. Yung outline ng history. Ngayon naman po, ay may share po ako sa inyo na outline naman po regarding spirit na may, may halin tulad sa spiritual restoration. Okay? Sa spiritual restoration. Kanina, nakita po natin yung returning to the land. Yung sa chapter 1 and chapter 2. Ang kalaki po niya, ang, ang pinaka, kumbaga, a, a spiritual side po niya ng history po na yan, is getting back to the right basis. Maganda po ito. Kaya gusto ko po ito, kinuha ko ito, ishare, gusto ko po ishare sa inyo ito. Dahil sa sinopsis po ng book, makikita natin yung spiritual reflection. Kaya it will not anymore give you the hard time na uh, mag-isip pa kayo ano kayong magandang iano dito. Ayan, kaya personal, and pang disciple nyo, pag may uh, dinidisciple kayo, magandang may share nyo rin dito. At least alam nyo yung sa history, sa pangyayari na yun, ano yung application nun? Spiritually. Okay? So yung first part, which is returning of uh, their return to the land, ang, ka ang kalaki po niya na spiritual restoration is getting back to the right basis. Okay? Getting back to the right basis. Pangalawa, the altar was re-erected. Okay? The altar was re-erected. Sa chapter 3, verse 1 to 6, may kita po natin. Ano na naman po ang ka, ano niyan? Kalintulad po niyan. Ang ka, ang, uh, uh, ano niyan sa, ang reflection niyan sa spiritual restoration. Dedication renewed. A dedication renewed. Yeah, well, of course, naalala niyo po, if we're always renewing our dedication, we always approach the altar. Alam niyo po ba yun? Are, are, we do, are you doing that? Amen? You see, when you renew your dedication to God, you always approach the altar. You see? Now, next, the third. Okay? Yung, uh, from chapter 3, verse 8 to 13, may, uh, or ver, yeah, verses 8 to 13, makita natin dyan yung pagsisimula ng new temple. Yung new temple, kasi nagtatayo nga po sila. Ano naman po ang reflection yan? Spiritual restoration yan is about their service and witness. Their service and witness. Okay? And then the, the, the fourth, yung may hinarap silang kalaban. Okay? Dito po may kita natin, in outline us as the adversaries obstruct. Adversaries obstruct. Habang nagbibuild sila, may hinarap silang kalaban. So the, there are uh, adversaries that obstructed them sa kanilang pag, uh, pagtatayo ng temple. Anong kalakip po niyan? Sa chapter 4, makikita natin yan. Faith tested. Faith tested. Ang ganda po nito, actually, kung iisipin niyo po ito, sana kinukuha niyo po ito. Again, sabi ko nga po sa inyo, uh, this is a great blessing that will really help you a lot. At uh, lalo na kung matagal na tayo simbahan, ay magandang ma-restore sa atin itong mga bagay po na ito. Alright, and verse number, uh, no, verse, uh, chapter 5, verse, verses 1, verse 1 hanggang chapter 6 to verse number 14, makikita na po natin dyan yung mga prophets sa pag -e exhort nila ng salita na Diyos. The prophet's exhortation of the word. So ano naman po ang kalakip niyan? Faith tested, ang sumunod is the need of God's word. Okay? The need of God's word. Siyempre, pag tinitest ang faith, Ang pinakasunod niyan is the need of God's word. 
Alright? And then the last, anim po, yan, anim. The last is, the temple was finished. Okay? The temple was finished. In chapter 6, verse 15 to 22, makikita po natin dyan, ang kapahayagan naman yan sa spiritual restoration, kinukumpare dyan as the victory of faith. Victory of faith. Yan ang napa maganda po ito. Actually, sabi ko nga kagabi habang uh, binabasa ko po ulit ito, sabi ko mismo ako ay uh, uh, personally po talagang uh, nare-review bagamat na ituro ko na po ito, pero hindi po yung iba po na binibigay ko sa inyo ay uh, hindi ko to personally na ituro sa Bible school. Kaya nga sabi ko personal na ano ko ito eh. Uh, review rin as well. You see? Kaya pag nag-aaral ay may personal review rin. So, yung, yung actually, yung spiritual restoration po na sinabi ko po sa inyo, yung comparison ng spiritual restoration sa kanilang historical, uh, or, yeah, sa, sa mga history, doon sa historical uh, chapters and uh, uh, part ng Book of Ezra, yung, yung spiritual restoration po na yun ay nasa stage 1 lamang po yun ng Book of Ezra. Okay? That eh, makikita natin ang dudulang yan sa stage 1. Kaya nga hanggang chapter 6 lang po eh. 'Di ba? Yung last verse na binigay ko sa inyo, yung temple finished, the victory of faith is from chapters uh, chapter 6 from verse number 15 hanggang verse number 22. So, the stage, the second stage of the book of Ezra na mula chapter 7 hanggang chapter 10 naman, eto naman lahat is more on the work of Ezra. Okay? Ito naman yung outline patungkol na kay Ezra. Okay? Apat lamang po ito. Bibigay ko po sa inyo itong apat na ito. And then, uh, uh, kung uh, makayanan pa ng ating oras because nag-start tayo ng tama, I actually started at about 9 o'clock. Then, uh, uh, this is only for 30 to 35 minutes. So, uh, let's see if we can uh, still finish this. The Book of Ezra in one uh, Sunday. Alright? So, pag hindi, tuloy po natin next week. Now, dito po tayo sa stage 2. From chapter 7 to chapter 10. Okay? From chapter 7 to chapter 10, as I said, ito na yung lahat uh, bida na dito si Ezra. Kasi maalala nyo, sinabi ko po sa inyo kanina, lumabas lang si Ezra sa book of Ezra, chapter 7 na. Okay? Wala pa siya sa mga nauna. So, sa chapter 7 na siya lumabas. Ano may kita natin po dito? <coughs> Sa first part na stage 2 ng book of Ezra, chapter 7, verse number 10, yung binasa po natin, it is all about the preparation of Ezra for the task. Okay? The preparation of Ezra. May ita po natin dyan from chapter 7, verse number 10 na binasa natin kanina. May ita natin dyan yung tamang preparation. Bakit? The heart, through preparation, his heart, to seek, to do, and to teach. Binasa natin yan. To seek the law. Or sabi mo ng Bible, For Ezra prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord, to do it, and to teach in Israel statutes and judgments. Alright? So yan po yan na dyan. First part na stage 2. Ezra's preparation for the task. The second part ng stage 2 is the prosecution of the task. Chapter 8 po natin may kita yan. Ezra's prosecution of the task. <coughs> so may kita po natin dyan, sa chapter 8 po na yan, ay yung tatlong, uh, ang tat may tatlong nilalaman po yan. The first one is the true dependence upon God. Na yung uh, of, uh, regarding his task, makikita dyan na emphasize yung kanyang pagdepende sa Diyos. Okay, pagdidepende sa Diyos. True dependence upon God. The second is the true uh, to seek the right way. Okay? To seek the right way. And then the last is the note. Uh, makikita po natin dito yung uh, uh, the notes ng pag-iingat uh, ni Ezra sa mga detalye na ibibigay sa kanya ng Diyos. Okay? Inuulit ko. Ito po makikita natin yung pag-iingat ni Ezra. Ezra's care for the details. Manonote natin dito yung pag-iingat ni Ezra sa detalye na binibigay ng Diyos sa kanya sa kanyang trabaho. Which is very important. Alright? So, yan po yan. Ezra's prosecution of the task. The third. The third. It is all about Ezra's consternation at 
compromise. Okay? Ulitin ko po, it is all about Ezra's consternation at compromise. Chapter 9 po yan. Sa chapter 9 po natin, makikita yan. Okay? Dalawa po ang nilalaman po ng, uh, ng third part po na yan, ang stage 2. Sa chapter 9, babasahin ko po sa inyo yung chapter 9, verse number 2 and verse number 4. Makikita po natin dyan yung sinasabi po dito consternation at compromise. Sa verse number 2, let me just read verse number 1. Now when these things were done, the princes came to me saying, The people of Israel and the priests and the Levites have not separated themselves from the people of the lands, doing according to their abominations, even of the Canaanites, the Hittites, uh, yeah, the Hittites, the Perizzites, and the Jebusites, the Ammonites, the, Wo the Moabites, the Egyptians, and the Amorites. For they have taken off their daughters for themselves and for their sons, so that the holy seed have mingled themselves with the people of those lands. Take note of that phrase. The holy seed have mingled. You see? The holy seeds have mingled themselves with the people of those lands. Yea, the hand of the princes and the rulers had been chief in this trespass. Move on to verse number 4. Or I'll read verse number 3. And when I heard this thing, I rent my garment and my mantle and plucked off the hair of my head and of my beard and sat down astonished. Verse number 4. Then were assembled unto me everyone that trembled the word at the words of the God of Israel because of the transgression of those that had been carried away. And I sat astonished until uh, the evening sacrifice. So makikita po natin dito again the consternation at compromise of Ezra. So makikita natin dyan na uh, sa verse number 4. Actually, <coughs> Uh, yung, 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 yung chapter, uh, yung the Holy Seed of Mingled, makikita po natin yan sa chapter 9, verse 2, and verse number 4. And then the next is yung resort. Okay? The, re the true resort, dun sa compromise. I spread out my hands to the Lord. Yan ang sabi po ni, uh, yan po ang sabi po ni Ezra because uh, wala naman siya ibang magawa kundi uh, ilapit lahat yun sa Panginoon. So the last part is Ezra's restoration. Chapter 10 na po yan. It's all about the restoration of separation. Okay? Ezra's restoration of separation. Makikita natin dito that the true concourse of the action is to put the wrong things to right. Okay? Diyan po yung napapaloob dyan. To put the wrong things to right. Okay? The true course of action. Makikita po natin yan sa chapter 10 verse number 6. Uh, uh, to verse number 7 Babasahin ko po Ezra chapter 10 Verse number 6 Sabi po ng Bible Then Ezra rose up from before the house of God And went into the chamber of Johanna, uh, or Johanan The son of uh, Eliashib And when he came thither He did eat no bread Nor drink water For he mourned because of the transgression of them That had been carried away Verse 7, And they made proclamation throughout Judah and Jerusalem unto all the children of uh, the captivity that they should gather themselves together unto Jerusalem. Verse 8, And that whatsoever would not come within three days, according to the counsel of the princes and the elders, all the substance or all his substance should be forfeited. And himself separated from the congregation those that had been carried away. Verse 9. Then all the men of Judah and Benjamin gathered themselves together unto Jerusalem within three days. It was the ninth month and on the twentieth day of the month. And all the people sat in the street of the house of God. Tingnan niyo po yan. Grabe yung restoration na ito. They sat in, oh, the people sat in the street of the house of God. Parang dyan sa gilid. Trembling because of this matter for the great and for the great rain. Verse number 10. 
And Ezra the priest stood up and said unto them, Ye have transgressed and ye ha and have taken strange wives to increase the trespass of Israel. In verse number 11, makikita na po natin yan. So on, yung sinabi na po dyan ni Ezra kung paano nila marirestore yung kanilang separation. Liwanag po yan. Now therefore, make confession unto the Lord of your fathers, the Lord God of your fathers, and do His pleasure. And separate yourselves from the people of Israel, uh, uh, separate yourselves from the people of the land and from the strange wives. And from the strange wives. And then later on, marami pa po yan hanggang sa matapos yung buong chapter 10. Alright? So yan po yung, uh, uh, yan po yung makikita po natin. Uh, sa uh, stage 2 ng Book of Ezra, yun ang panahon ni Ezra po ito. Yung si Ezra na mismo ay kasama sa karakter. Yung una po, pinakita ko sa inyo yung spiritual reflection dun sa first part, from chapter 1 hanggang chapter 6. The second state, second part ng Book of Ezra, chapter 7 hanggang chapter 10, it is more about yung dealing na ng Diyos sa tao at uh, sa, mga, uh, sa, sa kanyang mga tao using Ezra himself na. Alright? So, dyan po muna natin tatapusin ito and uh, uh, dadagdagan po natin ito next week. Dadagdagan ko lamang po ito na next week and baka simula na rin natin pumasok sa book of Nehemiah. Because like I told you, Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther ay may, may magkakadugtong na istorya po yan regarding the history of the Israelites. Alright? So again, brethren, uh, 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 marami tayong makukuha dito. And sabi ko nga po, it is very important na bigyan natin ng pansin ito dahil uh, it will always be familiar with the Word of God. It will always make us familiarize the Word of God. Sabi nga ni Pastor, ignorance of God's Word is ignorance of God. You see? Kaya wag natin mali-maliitin yung pag-aaral po natin sa detalye po ng salita ng Diyos. Alright? Pag alam niyo po, pinaka nakakalungkot na bahagi sa buhay natin kristyano, pag kinatamaran nyo ng pag-aaral ng salita ng Diyos. Naalala ko po, by the way, before me, let's all stand up please, before I pray, gusto ko lamang po ipaalala, let's all stand up please, gusto ko lamang po ipaalala para po sa ating lahat, we have our pastor, binibigay ng Diyos ang kanyang wisdom sa ating mahal na pastor sa mga programa na meron po tayo and uh, want to encourage everyone. Naalala ko, nabanggit ko po ito kay Sir Michael, uh, last time, no, last Thursday sa Baptist lunch. I've, I've noticed it. Actually, nag-message ako sa area ko. Alam niya ng mga taga-South Border family. I have noticed it. Pag ang topic ng Baptist lunch is about doctrine, ang baba ng viewers natin. Brethren, natutuwa tayo sa discussion on application, but even our pastor will, is always preaching to us. There's no application if there's no doctrine. Kaya ako po yan sinasabi sa inyo mga kapatid, huwag nyo pong katamaran manood kapag ka ang topic is about doctrine and details of the Bible kasi wala tayong ia-apply kung wala ang mga doktrina. Kaya, uh, kaya minsan nahihirapan po tayo. I'm not gonna preach, I'm just saying this. Kaya nahihirapan tayo mag-apply kasi tamad tayo sa doktrina. Huwag po tayong magpakahipokrito na magaling tayo sa application pero wala tayong alam sa doktrina, hindi po kailanman pwede mangyayari yun. I hope I've helped you this morning. Alright? Gusto ko lamang po kayo gisingin dyan para maalis natin, maalis natin yung sarili natin na guluhin tayo ng jablo sa katamaran natin pagdating sa doktrina. Pabagsak po tayo yan sa mga prosperity gospel preachers at uh, doon tayo babagsak sa mga ganun simbahan. Pero we are Baptists. We are in the Baptist Church. We have the right word of God. We are on the right faith. Then we should practice the right way. Amen. All right, Heavenly Father, thank you, O God, for these details of the book of Ezra that you have given to us. Salamat po, Panginoon, at patuloy niyo po kami iniingatan sa aming pong paglago spiritually. Thank you for uh, uh, continually giving us, O God, the details that we need, O God, para patuloy kaming maging malapit po sa inyo. Hinihiling ko po, Panginoon, that you always give us the right attitude towards the teaching and the preaching of God's Word. Give us a great, successful, hallelujah service, O God. All the glory belongs to you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, remain standing at tayo po ay awit.